In today's video, we are going to talk about the various mechanism processes of periglacial geomorphology. Now, when we talk about periglacial geomorphology, what this term periglacial means? It is, as you know, peri, peri means around the ice or peripheral to the margins of the glacier or the glacial landforms. So, periglacial term came from that only. Now, periglacial areas are of two types. The present-day periglacial zones as we can found in the Arctic regions of Alaska, Canada, Greenland, Siberia or Antarctica and so on. And another one is the fossil zone of Pleistocene and other parts of past Ice Age era. So, permafrost and active layer are the two most striking features of periglacial areas. So, before going into various mechanisms of periglacial geomorphology, we need to know what permafrost is. Well, the most striking feature of periglacial area is the permafrost. Well, the term permafrost was first used by S.W. Mueller. While K. Bryan used the term specifically per jelly sol, per as in permanently, jelly meaning freeze or soil meaning permanently frozen soil soil so permafrost is any ground that remains completely frozen it can be zero degree or cooler than that for at least two years and this is an image of permafrost as you can see over here this used to be permafrost and this area is permafrost and this is the active layer. Now what is active layer? It is the top layer of permafrost and layer which is characterized by diurnal freeze during night and thaw during daytime. Cycle during the intervening periods of summer and winter season. So that is why it is active soil. Now let's talk about the various mechanisms of periglacial processes. The first one is congelification. It is a weathering process on the periglacial climatic including freeze-thaw action, contraction, cracking or chemical weathering. But freeze-thaw action is by far the most active mechanism of rock shattering. Congelification simply known as the frost weathering. Latin word congelare to freeze and contracted to break includes freezing of moisture and water during night and subsequent thawing during daytime so it is basically in simple word it is a splitting or disintegration of rocks as the result of the freezing of the water co content as you can see in the picture this is the consequences of congelate fraction as fraction it fractured and disintegrates the rock now let's talk about the next mechanism which is frost heaving. It is basically the upward swelling of soil during the freezing condition caused by an increasing presence of ice that it grows towards the surface upward from the depth in the soil where freezing temperatures have penetrated into the soil. Well frost heaving is connected with freeze thaw cycle. But it is given separate entity as it helps in moving the coarse grain upwards. And frost heaving can be seen in the active layer. Now let's talk about a very common word soliflaction. When we talk about periglacial processes, soliflaction, soil creeping and congelifluxion is a very important mechanism. Well, what happens in this mechanism? The process of debris movement in periglacial regions has been variously defined and a number of terms have been suggested. First, J.G. Anderson proposed the term soliflaction for slow movement of debris. As you can see in the picture, this is the consequences of slow movement of soil. In short, we can say this is the mass movement of soil and regolith affected by alternate freezing and thawing can be seen in the saturated soil in high latitude. Now let's talk about the next mechanism which is nivation process. As you can see in the uh, picture, nivation process is a combination of various processes happens on the land. Such as the first thing happens when the snow falls and protected in small depression or hollows. Those hollows are named as nivation hollows. 
when snow falls and gathered around those hollows that happened on the step one and then in which fallen snow gets compacted into fern or nieve basically it means the granular snow previously melted and frozen and it kept agglomerated in the same place as the nivation hollows and then the in the third step the weathering process happens over this nivation hollows such as soil creeping or a congelly fraction a congelly fluxion because of that result down sloping of or the mass movement of this huge uh, ice patches and also the real wash happens which is due to water and this combination of this three step process is known as nivation process now these are the me mechanisms of various periglacial processes and there are several landforms of peri various periglacial processes that we know such as involutions hammocks palsa pingos and so on so if you find this video informative please like share and subscribe thank you